Hi, I'm Nicholas Metric with Saturday Morning Astrophysics at Purdue. Today, we'll be experimenting with the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is a phenomenon with waves where the waves appear to change frequency for the observer relative to its source. We'll be conducting this experiment using an app called Firefox. You can download this from the App Store, but we've also provided a link in the handout. We did a variety of procedures with the objective being to get our phone with the Firefox app close and far away relative to our sound source, we found that the best way to collect data was to simply hold your phone securely in your hand and spin it around your head next to the sound source. We have our Firefox app open. Now we can scroll down to acoustics and find the Doppler effect. We're going to select it. You'll then be given four values. The most important one for this experiment will be the base frequency. For this experiment, we will be using 800 Hertz. Now we're ready to start the experiment. First, we hit the play button on our app. Now, we're gonna start the sound on the computer. We're then gonna hold the phone in our hand and spin it over our heads for about 30 seconds. If you notice, the phone is actually moving closer and further away from the source of the sound. We tried a variety of frequencies while conducting this experiment, from as low as 150 hertz all the way up to 1,500 hertz. However, we found the best range to be anywhere between 800 and 1,000 Hertz. This is the data we collected. When we collected this data, we were using a sound of 800 Hertz. As you can see, though, the frequency recorded was not just 800 Hertz, but instead moves up and down. It goes as high as 805 and as low as 795. Now, how is this possible? Why is the phone recording higher and lower frequencies as it moves when we know that we're only producing a sound of 800 hertz. Relative to the observer, which in this case is the phone, the frequency appears to be changing. This is because the phone has velocity relative to the sound that it's recording. This causes the sound waves to become compressed and appear higher or stretched out and appear lower as the phone moves towards and away from the source of the sound. Now we've completed our experiment and we've collected our data. Let's try and make sense of the numbers we found. We'll start by making a model. Let's orient ourselves with a top-down view of our experimental setup. I've already drawn in the audio source. This will be you. The phone will be moving in a clockwise direction around this circle. The frequencies we observed went as high as 805 hertz and went as low as 795 hertz. Now, where do these high and low frequencies correspond in our diagram? Let's think about it. Higher frequencies result from compressed wavelengths, and lower frequencies result from expanded wavelengths. Where would that be on our diagram? Our source frequency was 800 hertz. This wavelength will represent 800 hertz. If our phone is moving clockwise, where on the diagram would the phone observe the wavelength to be most expanded? What about the most compressed? Let's think about where the phone is moving away from the source against where the phone is moving towards the source. If the phone were here, it's moving away from the source. So the phone will view the wavelengths to be more expanded. If the phone were here, it would observe the wavelengths to be more compressed. Now, will this greater wavelength correspond to a higher frequency or a lower frequency? If you guess lower frequency, you'd be correct. Conversely, the shorter wavelength will correspond to a higher frequency. Longer wavelengths mean lower frequency, and shorter wavelengths mean higher frequency. This means that the peaks of the waves will pass by the observer in a shorter amount of time. The Doppler effect is a phenomenon with waves. We'll be representing the velocity of the wave using CS. We'll be representing the wavelength of the wave using the Greek letter lambda, and we'll be representing the frequency of the wave using the Greek letter nu. We can use this information to rewrite the equation in order to calculate wavelength. We'll be using lambda s for source equals speed of sound divided by nu s for source. What this means is now we can plug in the values we found and find the wavelength. 
the accepted speed of sound is 340 meters per second. And the new that we got for our source is 800 hertz. After we do the calculation, we'll find that we get 0 0.425 meters per second. Oops, this is meant to be meters. Using our equation and our source frequency of 800 hertz, we found that the wavelength is about half a meter. Are you surprised? Before we leave the context of sound, we'll be calculating the velocity of the phone as it moves away from the source of the sound using the same equation astronomers use to calculate the motions of a receding galaxy. Let me show you how. We're going to calculate the velocity of the phone using the following equation, where the velocity equals the speed of sound times the wavelength as the phone moves away from the sound minus the wavelength of the source divided by the wavelength of the source. We went ahead and calculated the wavelength of the phone as it moves away from the sound source. We found it to be 0 0.428 meters. And above, we already calculated the wavelength of the source to be 0 0.425 meters. The given speed of sound, as we already know, is 340 meters per second. We calculated the wavelength as it moves away from the source to be 0 0.4 0 0.428 meters. The wavelength of the source to be 0 0.425 meters, which we then put again on the denominator. If we crunch all the numbers, we find that the velocity is 2.383 meters per second. The fact that the answer we calculated has a positive sign tells us that the phone is moving away from the source of the sound. On the contrary, if our answer had a negative sign, it would tell us that our phone is moving towards the source of the sound. Now how does this relate to astronomy? I mean, after all, there is no sound in space. Well, we can actually observe a similar effect with light. Light can appear to shift into longer wavelengths, such as red, or shorter wavelengths, like blue, depending on its velocity relative to the Earth. This actually tipped scientists off to the expansion of the universe. The written handout that accompanies this video will pick up where we left off. In it, you'll find that you'll do real calculations that astronomers use using real astronomical data. We hope you had fun partaking in the Doppler effect experiment with us. We hope to see you again soon at Saturday Morning Astrophysics at Purdue.